Welcome back, everyone. Despite only being two games in, the Lakers have already been making headlines, and per usual, a majority of them involve Russell Westbrook, a trade, or a potential free agent signing. They have not really been playing bad, and they've even looked pretty good on defense, but unfortunately, that does not matter when they're 0-2. Right now, they have two very obvious needs with number one being three-point shooting and number two being wing depth. Both of them have been exposed already and likely will continue to be unless a change is made, which could come through a trade, a buyout signing, or with a currently available free agent. However, it will not be easy for them to address both needs without making a trade, as it's very difficult to find a legitimate 3 and D wing for a low price. With all of that being said though, they appear to be considering every available option, and in today's video, we will talk about how they reportedly plan to go about doing that, along with an injury update to both Anthony Davis and Troy Brown Jr. Before we do that though, I would genuinely appreciate it if you could take a brief moment to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to get updated right away when I drop a new video. Without further ado though, let's dive right into it, and we'll begin by talking about a player they're reportedly looking at signing, with that player being Mo Harkless. According to both Mark Stein and The Athletic, the Lakers have interest in signing Harkless. They brought him in for both a workout and meeting, and are quite obviously thinking about picking him up. With them currently having a full 15-man roster though, how would they go about doing that? And well, it would very likely involve waiving one of their non-guaranteed contracts. At the moment, they have three of them, with those belonging to Wenyan Gabriel, Austin Reeves, and Matt Ryan. Although, there is no shot they'd waive Austin Reeves, and I kind of doubt they'd waive Wenyan Gabriel either, which would likely make Matt Ryan the one to be released. Would that be worth it though? Even though Mo Harkless is without a doubt the better wing defender, Matt Ryan definitely hasn't beat in regard to 3 point shooting, and that really forms an ultimatum for them here. They need both of those things, but they cannot get both of them in one available player alone. Mo Harkless is a 32% career 3 point shooter, and he is coming off of shooting 30.7% with Sacramento. Unfortunately, 3 point shooting has never really been his forte, he can knock them down here and there but I would not rely on him to make one every game. On the flip side though, he would provide them with one more bigger wing defender, and that is something they are definitely in need of. Up until this point, they've only had LeBron and Juan Toscano Anderson to fill that role for them, and they are already being asked to do a bit too much, with that being particularly true of LeBron. Now, they do have Troy Brown Jr. coming back, but as we found out, they're only one injury away from having very limited wing depth, and I'm not sure we can rely on him, JTA, and LeBron to play every single game moving forward. I mean, who knows, maybe they'll figure out a better way to organize their rotation, and one that would not require them to rely so heavily on LeBron, but in reality, it would be much easier to simply add Mo Harkless. He would help alleviate the defensive burden off LeBron, as between him, JTA, and Troy Brown Jr., one of them could always be on the court with him. Now, I would not call Harkless a lockdown defender, but he certainly is above average, and would be another guy for them to throw at bigger wing players. Would that be worth adding yet another below average 3 point shooter? I honestly think it might be. They are putting a clear emphasis on defense, and that has been enough to keep them in games. They obviously would prefer to have better 3 point shooting, but at this point, they might as well go all in on their defense, as they are not going to find a free agent who can both defend at a high level and provide great 3 point shooting. That is something that will have to come through a trade, and speaking of which, we got an update about when they might plan to make one. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, they are waiting until after Thanksgiving to make a trade, and if you are not aware of when that is, the date for that is November 24th, right around the 20 game mark. They are hoping for more teams to be willing to make a trade by then, which although would not be very likely during any other year, this time around might be different. No matter how badly Adam Silver is trying to deny it, more teams will definitely be tanking this year, with the grand prize being Victor Wenbanyama, it's really not hard to tell why either. 
And if any team is trending downward by around game number 20, the Lakers are hoping they turn to tanking and therefore become a trade option for them. Even though trading for Westbrook and his $47 million contract may not seem appealing, that is a golden opportunity for a team to get a higher draft pick. By making a trade for that contract, not only could a team get rid of two or even three quality players to make their team worse, but they could get rid of long-term money too. And although the Lakers have been trying to avoid that, they might have to take on some money to get a good return package, as that will likely be a requirement for any team looking to make a mid-season trade. With that being said though, which teams could we expect or rather hope to become an available option? We already know about San Antonio and Indiana, but what other teams might try to get worse? One team that is already trending in that direction happens to be the Charlotte Hornets. They lost a lot of momentum after losing LaMelo Ball to an injury, and they're simply not a good bet to make the playoffs. We already know what they would likely be offering too, with that including veteran Wayne Gordon Hayward, everyone's favorite player Kelly Oubre, child support king PJ Washington, and maybe Terry Rozier too. All joking aside here though, they could make for a pretty good trade partner. They have 3 point shooting, wing defense, and a lot of playoff experience to offer. Other than them though, a couple more options, albeit less likely ones, can include the Orlando Magic and Washington Wizards, both of which are not a good bet to make the playoffs either. If I had to put my money on it though, I would think that they are hoping for a deal with Charlotte. They've already been linked to them in the past, and they might have gotten a deal done with them had it not been for the Miles Bridges situation. The Hornets were looking to offload long-term money to re-sign him, which likely included trading either Gordon Hayward or Terry Rozier, and potentially even both of them. The Lakers know the connection between Westbrook and Michael Jordan, who is both the team owner of the Charlotte Hornets and the guy that Westbrook represents through his shoe brand. I would not doubt to see more rumors about a trade with them, and potentially as soon as after Thanksgiving. Finally though, we got an injury update on both Anthony Davis and Troy Brown Jr., which I briefly referred to before, and according to Darvin Ham, they are both probable for their game tomorrow, and that is very good news for their odds of winning. Anthony Davis could barely finish their game against the Clippers, and many thought that would likely lead to him missing their game against Portland, or at the very least be questionable for it. Thankfully though, that does not appear to be the case, and it now looks like they will be getting back Troy Brown Jr. too, who is set to make his Laker debut. That will be huge for their wing depth, and it will give them a better idea of how much they do or do not need another wing like Mo Harkless. That is what I will be watching for, and hopefully we can get a good feel for how Troy Brown impacts the rotation. Regardless though, I think Mo Harkless will be given further consideration. To wrap everything up here though, the Lakers appear to be closely monitoring Mo Harkless, the trade market for Russell Westbrook, and then are likely getting back Troy Brown Jr. for tomorrow's game. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the idea of adding Mo Harkless? And then what team are you monitoring as a potential trade partner for Westbrook? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.